de Broglie hypothesis for wave nature of matter. According to de Broglie, all material particles when they are in motion they possess wave nature and the waves which are produced because of this moving particles are known as matter waves and what de Broglie says that the wavelength of these matter waves is given by the formula lambda is equal to h upon m v where h is Planck's constant. M is mass of the particle and V is velocity of the particle. Now to derive this, what we can assume if we say there is a particle known as photon of frequency nu, then according to Planck's quantum theory, according to Planck's quantum theory, energy of this particle will be given by E is equal to H E. And if M is the mass of the particle, mass of the particle and V is the velocity with which particle is moving. Then the kinetic energy of the particle will be half m v square and Einstein in according to Einstein as mass energy relationship if the particle is if the particle is moving with velocity c velocity c which is the velocity of light then energy is given by e is equal to mc square and since photon is a basically particle of light so e must be equal to mc square and name this equation as 1 and this equation as 2 so from 1 and 2 what we can say h nu is equal to m c square. So, from here we can find out the value of m which is the mass of the photon which we have assumed so m is equal to h nu upon c square and the momentum of this photon will be given by m into c. So, this is equal to what h nu upon c square into c. So, this will be h nu by c or we can say it is h by lambda. What we can say then therefore lambda is equal to h upon p which is the de Broglie wave equation also which is also known as de Broglie wave equation. Wave equation of the matter waves. This lambda is equal to h upon p, p is where is momentum. So, for general we can say lambda is equal to h upon mv is the de Broglie wave equation for the particles which are in motion. Now, from this if v is 0 that means lambda is infinite and if v is infinity then lambda is 0. So, what we conclude that only the particles which are in motion they possess wave nature and material particle can be charged or uncharged 
but these matter waves are independent of charge. That means the Broglie waves cannot be electromagnetic waves because electromagnetic waves can be generated by the motion of charged particles. So this is the conclusion. First conclusion that only the particles which are in motion, particles in motion possess wave nature and these matter waves are not electromagnetic waves. Matter waves are not electromagnetic waves. We can also study the wavelength, how this wavelength of the matter waves depends upon temperature using the kinetic theory of matter. That means dependence of dependence of wavelength on temperature. So according to kinetic theory, kinetic theory of matter, kinetic energy of the matter is given by 3 by 2 kT, where k is Boltzmann constant and T is temperature and kinetic energy gained by the metal particle is given by half mv square. So if we equate these two That is half mv square is equal to 3 by 2 kT. That means what we can say m square v square is equal to 3 m kT or we can say m v square is equal to 3 m kT or m v is equal to under root 3 m kT. So putting this value of mv in the given de Broglie equation that is lambda is equal to h upon mv what we can write 3 m kt. So what we conclude that the wavelength is inversely proportional to square root of temperature. Got it? So this is how wavelength depends upon temperature of the material particles when it is in motion. Now specifically we can find out the wavelength of the slow moving electron that is for this let us assume an electron is accelerated by potential difference V from rest such that gain in kinetic energy of electron will be half mv square. That means now we are finding the wavelength of electron which is in motion. So gain in kinetic energy of the electron is half mv square and work done on the electron will be equal to E into V where V is potential difference. applied to accelerate the electron, to accelerate electron. So this Ev must be equal to half mv square. So again we can write 2 Ev is equal to mv square or we can write mv whole square as 2 mev. So what we can write mv is equal to under root 2 m e v. So what we have calculated that de Broglie wavelength of electron in terms of potential difference. So how will you write in terms of potential difference? Lambda is equal to h upon under root 2 m e v. You will see but all these constants h m e are constant for electrons. 
At this Planck's constant, whose value is given by 6.63 into 10 to the minus 34 joules second. M is mass of electron, which is what? 9.1 into 10 to the minus 31 kilogram. E is what? Charge of electron, which is what? 1.6 into 10 to the minus 19 coulomb. So, after substituting all these values, constant values in this equation, name it 1. From 1, what we can say? Lambda is equal to 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 divided by under root 2m is 9.1 into 10 to the minus 31 into 1.6 into 10 to the minus 19 into v. So if I calculate all these values, the final answer will be lambda is equal to 12.27 upon under root v into 10 to the power minus 10 meter. So we can write 12.27 upon under root v angstrom. This is the wavelength of electrons which is in motion. We can verify this wavelength with the help of an experiment also. That experiment was performed by Davison in Germany. So the text is experimental verification of this wave nature of matter. So let us do that. This is, we probably gave theoretical concepts and Davison and Germer performed an experiment to verify this mathematical expression. So next is the Davison and Germer experiment. This experiment is to show the wave nature of matter. And basically they have taken very slow moving electron for explaining the wave nature of matter. For this the experimental setup is like this. Is it clear? This is theta. This F is filament which is of tungsten coated with barium oxide and this F is filament 
of tungsten coated with barium oxide. C is metallic cylinder, metallic cylinder with hole in its axis connected with the negative terminal of the battery. And therefore it is known as cap hole. Then A is again metallic cylinder with hole in its axis connected positive terminal of the battery and therefore known as Whereas N is nickel crystal which is diagonally diagonally electron detector this is all about experimental demonstration now let us try to understand the function of each and every part of this experimental demonstration F which is filament which is basically the source of electron this filament will eject the electrons because of the heating which is done by the current which is supplied from the low tension battery now this cathode which is kept at the negative terminal of the battery or which is acting as a cathode, it is used to converge the electron beam so that electron which are emitting from the filament they should emerge in the form of a beam. This A metallic cylinder which is given positive potential with respect to cathode or therefore it is known as anode is used to convert the electron beam into a fine beam and the combination of this cathode and anode is known as electron gun which is used to obtain a fine beam of electron from the filament and then this fine beam of electron will strike the nickel crystal normally. After striking the this electron beam with the nickel crystal it will get scattered. This scattered electron beam which is like this will be captured by the detector. This detector will detect the intensity of the scattered beam. This, scattered, this scattering is done at some angle which is known as angle of scattering. Now what we have done by varying this potential which is the potential between cathode and anode they have studied the various scattering angle of the scattered beam and they, what they have studied they have observed the intensity of the scattered beam at various angles. They have, they have performed this experiment between 44 volt to 68 volt of the accelerating potential between cathode and anode and at 54 volt they have observed that the intensity of the scattered beam is of this type. There is a peak at an angle phi is equal to 50 d. This peak is basically due to the constructive interference of the electron beam which is diffracting from which is basically scattering from the 
various layers of the nickel crystal okay and this is constructive interference is basically what diffraction of the electron which establishes the wave nature of matter clear to everyone so this peak is basically the wave nature because of the wave nature of the electron what we have observed that at 54 volt at this angle intensity scattered beam is maximum then if this is a scattering angle then this theta is the glancing angle so when get this theta will become what 65 degree and the interatomic crystal spacing is 0.91 angstrom now if we use the equation given by Bragg's for first order diffraction maxima which is 2d sin theta is equal to lambda and we get the value 0.91 into sin 65 degree is equal to lambda and the value comes out to be 1.66 angstrom. Now using the Broglie concept which is lambda is equal to 12.27 upon under root v angstrom which we have derived earlier. So putting the value of v that is what 54 volt and you will see the result is 1.65 angstrom. If we compare these two result they are very close to each other which confirms the wave nature of matter. If we compare these two results, the results are very close to each other, which confirms the wave nature of matter. So this experiment was done by consuming the slow motion of electron. We can also verify the same wave nature by fast moving electron and this experiment was performed by G.P. Thompson. We say it is G.P. Thompson experiment. 